Hello! Today is the day. Um, autopilot has been officially released for the Tesla Model S, and it's awesome. <laughs> so, they keep saying semi-autonomous driving on the highway. It's more of a lane keep assist that doesn't require you have your hands on the wheel. It pretty much drives itself. With markings on it. So, it's, you can see it sees one of the lines on the road and it shows that well, we have autopilot available. So we double tap and then the control, it's controlling the steering now and it's controlling the speed based on when I pulled it towards me for the cruise control. So I was at 28 miles per hour. I can pull it towards me for a second and then it'll set to 30 miles an hour, which is the last speed limit sign that it read. You can see that it can detect uh, obstacles on the right side here that are popping up. Now it's these two solid lines, so they're both showing up here. And uh, we can also increase the cruise control. We can turn on our turn signal and it'll switch lanes automatically. You just gotta be sure, you know, you look ahead of time. Although if there if it thinks there's something in the way, it won't switch lanes. So it's it's pretty it's pretty good about the whole thing. So you just again we'll, we'll hit the turn signal and it'll go back into the other lane. So at this point, the Tesla is driving itself. But there are limitations. Um, I'll go ahead and give you a demo of it. It's it's pretty cool. You just need to be on roads with really good markings. So primarily highways, freeways, and you know freshly paved black road. Um, it does work on concrete, but it's not as good. And when I say not as good, that means you might require your hand on the wheel. So basically when the sensor data is really good, when it has lane markings on both the right and left side of the car, and you're following a vehicle, it's pretty good. You can go for a very long time, for many, many miles with ever, without ever having to touch the wheel. Um, if there's not a right lane or there's not a pilot car, it's not so good and it'll ask you to put your hand on the wheel. And if your hand's not on the wheel, it'll ask again and it'll ask more frequently as the data isn't as good um, for the car to judge where it's going. So ultimately what it does is it stops the car. <laughs> it slows down, stops the car, puts the hazard lights on so nobody will wreck into you, or hopefully they won't wreck into you. <laughs> so if you accidentally fall asleep while it's driving you, um, it'll you know stop the car and flash the hazards. Um, so far in my tests, I've been able to go five minutes without my hands on the wheel. But the area that I live, the roads are really rough. They're really dirty. Um, I'm surprised it can even go that far. <laughs> but it is kind of cool. I mean, even if you just like keep your hand on the wheel and drive, it does all the steering for you. And it kind of feels like you're in a rut or like on a track. Um, and you have control all the time. And they tell you to always pay attention to the road and be ready to take over at any minute. And it gives you warnings ahead of time when it, the sensor data is weak. So you'll know when to, you know, get ready to be alert if something's going to change. Um, yeah, and all you have to do is just move the wheel and you take over. Or you can hit the brake and you take over. It's, it works pretty good. All you do is you pull the cruise control forward. And that um, is normally cruise control. But if you do it twice, it'll go into full autopilot mode. And you'll see a little steering wheel that pops up when it, whenever there's enough data to do that. You'll also see there's two lane markers on the interface. The, the other thing you need to make sure and do is you need to go to your settings and you need to make sure that you have the autopilot settings on. So you need to have auto steer on and auto lane change. And I highly recommend you leave on the chimes. Autopilot, cruise control, 65 miles an hour. Uh, it wants us to hold the steering wheel again. There's a car behind us, so we will. So hold the steering wheel the warning goes away. You could just kind of keep your hands on the steering wheel all the time and you can feel it controlling the car. It's kind of like you're almost on a in, a in a rut on a road is what it feels like. Like you could steer out of it and that's the cool thing. As soon as you as you um, you want to end the autopilot, all you got to do is just, you know, hit the brake, move the wheel, any any manual control that you have will take over at any minute or any time. So you always have full control over the car. It's just more of an assist. So, I mean, technically it's driving itself, but at any point in time you can take over and you need to be able to take over. 
they keep maintaining that you need to have um, full full control or full alertness, eyes on the road, get ready to take over at any time. So like right now, this car in front of us is turning. Uh, you can see that the car is in front of us on the display. Um, we're not turning, so it'll just go back again. Not using my feet on the pedals, it's just all auto. So we're back on autopilot. It's been driving itself for a while. I'm still in position to take over at any second now, just in case. And it's saying that there's not enough sensor data, so I should put my hands on the wheel. Um, I'm not going to, because there's, there's nobody behind us, and I just want to test out what the safety mechanism is if you don't put your hands on the wheel. So it's saying to maintain the seat, to maintain your speed, you need to put your hands on the wheel. So if we don't put our hands on the wheel, the car slows down, and now there's a car behind us. Now we gotta go. But it would stop and it would turn on the hazards. <laughs> so that's, that's how that works. But since I put my hand on the wheel, everything went back to auto because it had good sensor data, and uh, that's pretty much the gist of it. Auto parallel park, it'll show a little um, P right next to the other P right over here um, for the parallel park. And then on your, your, your larger display, you'll see like an auto park. And it works really good under the perfect conditions. That means you have to have um, a little bit more than 20 feet, no less than 20 feet between the two cars. You pull up to it, you gotta be under, under 18 miles an hour. And I think there's gotta be a pretty good curb and it may have to be in daylight because I haven't got it to work in the dark and I haven't got it to work on areas with lines on the roads. Um, so yeah, it's kind of limited at the moment, but the few times I have got it to work, it worked great. A lot faster than I can parallel park. It's really fast compared to other auto parking systems. It is like, it just went back and it didn't have to do a bunch of auto correcting. It was cool. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching the show. I will see you again soon. Please subscribe if you like these videos and we'll see you later. This has been the Two Smart Guys Reduction.